Hello everybody, Killer Tia here. And yes, I know it's been a while since we actually done a review, but we're gonna get back on track here at my new place of living here. Granted, it's still a little bit of a mess here, but it's a work in progress, and I, I like to think that so far we're doing good. Trust me, we think this is a mess. Just see what's happening behind the camera here. But anyways, enough about my room. Today we are talking about Kid Dracula here. A parody of the Castlevania game released only on the Famicom in Japan. Never released in America whatsoever. Okay, technically there was a Game Boy version of that. But we're not covering that version because like... I'm more interested in a game that... The NES never got, but the Famicom did, so let's dive right into this game. And for that, we'll be playing it on the Castlevania Anniversary Collection here on the Nintendo Switch here. Also available on the PlayStation 4, maybe on Xbox and PC, I'm not 100% sure on that. But anyways, let's dive right into the review. After waking up 10,000 years, Kid Dracula wakes up to find out that his realm had been taken over by another demon, so he sets out on a comical adventure to take his land back. And I do have to say, it's kind of funny how this cute little thing grows up to become a human hating nightmare that we all love to hate in the Castlevania series. Graphically speaking, Kid Dracula is a good looking NES game. Uh, the brights are very well done, and the overall style is very cartoonish compared to the gothic styles of the regular Castlevania game. However, on occasion, you all notice not only slowdowns, but also flickerings in the sprites themselves. This is because the NES has a very limited amount of sprites it can display, so the more sprites that goes over the limits, the more the flickering it happens. It's not exclusively a problem to the kid Dracula, and it does happen to even some of the most polished NES games from the early 90s. But it's also kind of disappointing to see that this is happening to a game like this. As far as the gameplay is concerned, it plays like your average Castlevania game on the NES, but instead of using a rip, you're firing fireballs at your enemies. Or what I assume is fireballs. Um, the controls are a little stiff, but you can honestly say that about any of the 8-bit Castlevania games from this era. And after each boss battle, at least the first 6 levels or so, you do get new power-ups for your bench. For example, you get a homing shot projectiles here. In later stages, you get the ability to transform into the bat, and take a page out of Metal Storm, Another fun NES game, the ability to walk on the wall, or the ceiling, I should say, for a few seconds. And as far as the boss battles are concerned, it's kind of a mixed bag of, oh, this is easy to, okay, let me get a few tries in to get the pattern down to, oh my god, what was Konami thinking with this guy? I'll be, I will admit, at this boss battle, I did abuse the save states in the Castlevania Anniversary Collection to get past them. And I may have used save states throughout the entire game as well because some of the parts were just difficult. But this guy, this guy really needed it. I will say it was kind of cute that instead of fighting the Statue of Liberty as a traditional boss battle, it's more of a trivia quiz show than anything else. And it's kind of cute in my opinion. I think my biggest gripe with the game is the mini games themselves in between the actual levels. From the way you have to choose them, which is kind of stupid in my opinion, to the actual mini games themselves, which relies more on luck than anything, I just didn't have any fun with them. I mean, granted, it's a good way to get some extra lives, but. Overall, I just really didn't enjoy the mini games. Despite the difficulties and the lackluster mini games, I did enjoy my time with Kid Dracula. 
Now, granted, I wouldn't go out of my way to get a physical copy of the game, but as a part of the compilation like Castlevania Anniversary Collection, I definitely say it's worth a shot. Especially considering that us Americans never really got to play the game in an official capacity before. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed my review. If you want to catch more of me, you can follow me on Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'm definitely trying to stream much more often on Twitch myself. Links will be in the description below, and catch you all next time.